Good boy. Hello, me and Taro are here. Oh, ow, you headbutted me. <laughs> you headbutted me. I've been doing book reviews for a while now, but I've never really felt nervous to talk about a book. But I feel like I'm, I am a little bit nervous today. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, mostly I don't overthink things that much. I read a book, I have some thoughts and I love sharing that with you guys and sometimes you know you guys give me some feedback like oh that made me think completely differently about something or you guys give me a completely different opinion. It's all very casual. I think if there's a platform where you can communicate with a large group of people about things that you're passionate about, I see YouTube as that and I really enjoy it. But I get a little bit nervous when I know that overall the sentiment around something is very very strong and that my message within that might not come across the way I intend to. And today I am talking about this book. This is Film For Her by Orion Carlotto. And I think this is such a beautiful piece of work, by the way, the cover, everything about it, but I'll get to that in a, in a moment. Um, the reason I was feeling a bit nervous, I feel like the whole um, consensus at the moment around contemporary poetry and especially books that are um, formatted this way. So there's a bit of writing, there is photography, there is, I would say, a multimedia, not multimedia, there's a multitude. <laughs> there is a variety of different forms of art in here. There is poetry, there is lyrics, there is uh, photography, there is art, there is so much happening here. I thought about it for a second and if I look back in what I can remember, my first introduction to this genre or this type of uh, book was more Alexa Chung's It. I don't know if you guys remember, it's been a while since that was published. I remember picking it up and I remember being so impressed, like in the best way possible. I thought it was like my world of Tumblr and my world of books coming together. And for some people, it didn't really work. I feel like a lot of people think that books are tend to be a certain way and this is not like these are just some tweets put in a book but if you think about it if you've read like um compilations of quotes by different people of different things like not traditional books are like fiction and like have prose after prose after prose i'm talking about books that are um, maybe diary entries and stuff like that which i've also read and really enjoyed not every book has to have the same format and i actually think like in the future uh, maybe like in 50 or 100 years, people will have a name or an understanding of what this genre or what this type of book says about our time and our culture and um, this part of history. But it's just currently, I feel like there is a bit of underappreciation for um, this genre of books. And I think it is slightly because of, I don't want to put it all the blame into one person, but because of Rupi Kaur and her works, I feel like she's one of the probably more controversial people who've put out this type of work out there and it hasn't been all well accepted. She has a very good, very strong core audience, people who love her work. But I feel like a lot of people actually feel like it's um, kind of like a cash grab because there's not a lot of material in there. And it just feels like, you know, the poetry is sometimes like a few words, sometimes a few lines and feels not as well thought out. I guess that's the more common argument I've heard against it. Personally, I have Ruby Core. I've read the first book, Milk and Honey, mostly because everyone's read that book. I was curious. <laughs> I actually own a copy of that. And I would never read anything else by her because I did not enjoy it. But this doesn't mean that she's a good or a bad author or a poet, anything. It's just that means I personally didn't enjoy it. Um, I was on a work trip a couple of years ago. I've been following Orion for a couple of years on YouTube. I saw her book Flux in one of the Waterstones in somewhere in England and I picked it up and I read it in one sitting in that bookstore I didn't buy it I just read it there which um, not good <laughs> but I was got so hooked and I was I had time so I finished the book there and I was like really thoroughly impressed and I don't think that one had any imagery correct me if I'm wrong but it had a lot going on it wasn't the kind of book you should be sitting and reading in one go it definitely one that you have to take some time but the cover art was absolutely gorgeous if I wrote a book I want I would want Orion to design the cover 100% no one else so I knew of her and for me she was more like a youtuber turned um, author slash poet and I feel like it's also strange to be reading 
a book that's written by like a contemporary, like someone who is present in the world and living it and experience it with you, which a lot of authors are, but that you're also in a parasocial relationship with. Meaning I admire so many aspects of her life before I even got to know about her writing and her poetry. I am a big fan of, in general, her aesthetic, and that doesn't mean her interior aesthetic or her housing. Like, I think she has a generally a great sense of aesthetic that comes through in her design and her work. And hence, I was really curious to know if she does write something, what, what was that going to be? It's just a way of, I guess, engaging with your some of your favorite creators a step further. I would say the first one, Flux, felt a little bit more like musings um, than pure poetry. Some of them, poetry was absolutely amazing. Some of it was like, oh yeah, this could, I see how these people could find this a little bit underwhelming. But in this one, it's like a mix of poetry and prose. And overall, I see this, come on. Overall, I see this as such a beautiful piece of art because the cover, the material, the cloth material here, the color that she's used, the film medium that she's used to take these all these photos, and the way the layout is done, and every single picture she's positioned, the whole curation of this book is very impressive. I'm gonna read you also, like, if you think about details, how gorgeous is that? Dearest reader, when poetry is written, beneath the folds of every word, images unravel. That never made much sense to me until I began discovering stories in my own photographs. Existing between comfort and desire, you don't realize how valuable a moment is until the years have passed and time slips in between your fingers. There's a special kind of pleasure that comes with appreciating the mundane. The highs and lows begin to feel useless compared to all the in-betweens. Funny how nostalgia shows up in different forms the, the older you get. Film for her is a reflection of all the instances in my life where I found beauty in the most ordinary places. A storybook of people, places, and memories captured on film, an ode to my youth, a supercut of dreams, an homage to growing up. In a world where we have to be so obsessed with trying to survive, I hope these words serve as a gentle reminder that it's okay to simply live. Orion. When I read this book, I almost felt like it was a bit of a, like, time capsule of the age that we live in because Orion's own style, like her muses that she talks about um, and the book she reads by, like she, she loves um, works by Eve Babbitts and Joan Didion and there's so many incredible authors that I've kind of discovered through her. So she's definitely very well read. So there is no reason for us to like take this as a direct like form of art as books have been done in the past, I think we should give people um, in this time period, like people who are creators in our world, the flexibility to be able to create books, create art in the form of a book in any way they can. I don't see a problem with that. I personally saw this as like a way to encourage other people to romanticize the mundane in their lives and try to look at everything through a more romantic lens and i think sometimes we're lacking that where we are around you know in an environment where it's very much like go 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 it becomes harder to kind of sit down and actually look through everything that's happened and put it all in a beautiful way and just like appreciate it and i i think i'm really good at that where i have like memory books and journals and stuff that i create that help me just encapsulate like really significant parts of my life that allow me to remember it for a really long time but had that not been the case i think i too would have struggled to appreciate how much good takes place in between the bad and just focus too much on like the shit that's happening in my life in the book orion is also traveling like way back um to her childhood and taking images from a period in her life where you know things were just happening and as children we don't really process much of what's happening in that moment but much later she kind of goes back to those memories and it's sandwiched between like current experiences and then there is a significant part about love and pain and it's all kind of put together but none of it like takes away from the other or it doesn't feel like she's kind of tried to put too much together in this or as i understand i think milk and honey was very much about kind of breakups and heartbreak this feels like an homage to life and how nuanced it can be and how one day to another you are 
bouncing between happiness and sadness and frustration and um, just a lot of hope and a lot of hopelessness. There's so much that happens in life. It's about processing those things and taking it one at a time. I think we become so fixated sometimes at like just focusing on the highs or the lows that we don't really think about how it would be like if you just sit down and wrote day to day like what's happening in your life and then took that as a snapshot like 10 days and what image would that draw in your head instead of thinking about those particular moments if that makes sense so when i finished reading the book i very much like thought wow in this last year so much has happened i haven't really taken the time to process and that's a really nice takeaway to come out of a book with because sometimes i have a lot of food for thought i have a lot of um, new concepts in my head a lot of knowledge that i come back with but rarely do i feel like wow like you know that really made me feel like okay it's a good time to kind of just slow down and think about everything that's happened and appreciate somewhat like the small bits and the small things that have happened in this time if you pick up this book i would love for you to experience it more as a reflection of the human experience today and you know how each and every one of us is actually going through very similar things like we're all conflicted as to like what to focus our time and energy on because there's just so much that life desires like not desires like demands from us and i think in that whole chaos what i struggle with personally the most is actually among all the things that i want to do and achieve what's really important to me what actually do i want to do what really calls my name and like those things are hard because you're always confused between what is expected of you and what you really want to do and i think sometimes it's hard to draw the line between the two there is this one section that i really loved where she talked about uh, meeting a girl called marta in um when she was i guess babysitting in Cannes, and she was there and like one night they were just at the beach drinking um alcohol and she's not much of a drinker but they had a lot of wine and the experiences on how she describes these people and so many times like these people come in and out of our lives and they have such a huge impact on us and sometimes good sometimes bad they're lovers and what other way to process pain but what other better way to process pain than turn it into art or turn it into poetry i personally believe in that because when i'm going through so much the only thing i hate talking to people when i'm going through really bad shit i just like to sit down and write it down like i write it down and then i can separate itself from me and i feel like okay that's that's it now like i'll put it away and maybe sometime later i'll come back and read it sometimes i delete it but i do feel like just putting it out helps you process it a lot better than just mulling over it in your head again and again sorry that not really related to the Marta chapter but what i meant is like when she talked about Martha, Mar Marta it felt like she was like looking at this experience that she had and she called her her soulmate and she was like wow like i met this person it was so un um kind of like unlikely that these types of experiences come around when you're least expecting them and that's the beauty of it and the way she wrote it the photo she used next to it it was just i really love that there's also some really fun um pictures but then you read the poem and it feels like it might correspond but not always there's also snapshots like from her nightstand and pictures that i've seen on her instagram that she shared as well which i don't see there's anything wrong with it all the photos that we take every single day just because we upload them, them on instagram doesn't mean they're not art if anything you put a lot of love and effort um there's different letters that she had from people that she shared that was also really nice i think whoever this is callum has a really good handwriting there's also some like very L la <laughs> there's also some bits that are like so la and pictures like these um see some if you feel like this is a bit of a waste of money for you like i totally get it but i'm someone who purchases like no let's not say picture books like i buy books of people's photography i buy so much like books about art about design and things like that so i don't see this as any different to investing into a book that is just filled with words it's just different i'm saying this again and again because i've heard so many people argue that this is not a book they would want to put money into because it's just pictures do you know how much time goes into curating something like this i've been talking for a while so i'll kind of leave you to grab the book read it but my personal takeaway from this book was to remember to zoom out from your life sometimes so for her reference zoom out from your life sometimes and actually like experience it in all its fullness 
instead of always zooming in and focusing on certain experiences or certain things that are happening right now because when you zoom out you realize that it's never really been like a constant path towards anything if anything it's all come in a winded way but it's all led you somewhere and that way it's easier to deal with things as they're happening um i, I personally feel that way so i do hope that you do give it a try if you are planning to read any contemporary poetry this is one that i do recommend i don't always come to you with poetry recommendations and of course ocean wong um, it's a little bit more dark a little heavier but i will talk about it once i'm done um kind of like took me a long time to read his work but really appreciating it taking the time to process Sometimes I come and do these reviews a few months after I read the book so that I have some time to process and if I'm still remembering and thinking about these books in the future, it's like me proving to myself that I actually am interested in talking about this book because sometimes like I talk about certain books that I read like yesterday when I'm super excited but sometimes I don't even talk about books I read because they're kind of like lost in my memory. So the fact that I'm coming and talking about this book a couple of months after I read it um, does mean that it aged really well in my head and I like kind of like fine wine you know it ages well you feel good about it you feel good talking about it so I hope you enjoy it um that's all for today and I'll see you in my next video bye